Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? The dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the time that we have once again to open your word. And we invite your spirit's presence here into our midst. We pray, Lord, that we can learn of you, and learn of Christ, his meekness and holiness. Help us to trust in you in spite of what we see around us. May your Holy Spirit work upon the hearts of those watching these videos. And we just pray that uh, your work will continue throughout this world. Help us to leave all things in your hands. And we ask for your spirit to be here in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, good morning again. Now, there was a... Uh, did you figure out anything more, Dwight, about the the number of people at the vote regarding papal infallibility. I've got a few sources to look at. I agree. You know, w one of the sources has to has to have an incorrect reference, <clears throat> but yeah. it's going to be a question as to which one. Well, I went to like uh, Catholic sites, um, and they all say five hundred and thirty three votes. Also, they give the number when they break down the number of the delegates who were there at the different votes. The 533 just seems to work better. Uh, they would have had to have 160 people. Some people leave in order for there only to be 433 votes in the second vote, right? So you look at the number that were there July 13th and then at the number of votes, so, so somewhere somebody made a mistake and it's being replicated. It's hard sometimes to find out which is the one that's the mistake that's being repeated, right? I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. So, so I, I'm leaving it as 533 votes because that seems to be from authoritative web, websites, unless we can find something that, that's more authoritative. Anyway, that was just uh, a little thing left over. So that was uh, that vote, of course, for papal infallibility. So Daniel 11, verse 16, and, and probably I need to make a note regarding that. And and I could even just, you know, put this here in the document itself. But part of what I, I was further intrigued with on this mm -hmm. was the fact that of the two that voted against this, they were both born on October 28th of different years. Okay. The other thing is that uh, the American Pope that voted against it, Fitzgerald, mm -hmm. yeah, was sent as the Bishop of Arkansas. Yeah, so you got the Bishop of Arkansas voted against papal infallibility. So that's right. Kind of interesting. They were. Um, the the bishop in Arkansas, Fitzgerald, was 23 years, 9 months, 25 days when he was ordained. And the bishop in Sicily was 23 years, 9 months, and 7 days when he was ordained. Okay. And I don't know if there's there's anything there that's... Not that I can think of. I looked through a lot of the different things you have there. I didn't really see anything that that I could use, but it doesn't mean that there isn't. I just couldn't see it. I'll put that like that. So anyway, you got the lexical sum of that verse. <clears throat> okay. So I think that's that's it's got all the numbers in there in that verse. So I didn't need that other verse there. So of course the idea is that this is when because we have two ways we can look at the Sunday law. So the Sunday law, obviously, there is the actual Sunday law that's still future. But September 11th represents Revelation 18, which is the Sunday law. So this idea that he's going to um, stand in the glorious land, I mean, that definitely that's 9-11. And, I mean, obviously, the date of July 18, 1870 uh, has its significance to our lines. But also it has this significance regarding um, uh, just what it's about, the infallibility of the Pope when speaking ex-cathedra. 
Now, the Pope doesn't do that very often nowadays, but so, but the idea is that it's connected to the papacy conquer, conquering the United States. So I, I think it's, it's a very valid that we can take this lexical sum and connect it. We know that Jeff on um, Sabbath, he, he was basically denying uh, the use of numbers of Palmoni in the way that it's being used, right? That's, that's the idea. And of course, we have a hard time with that, right? The idea that we could just dismiss everything that uh, God has done with numbers, that we would have to ascribe this to some other power. I mean, to me, that's that's the only logical conclusion I would have. If you're going to reject uh, the use of numbers, yeah, I, I just don't know of of any other way to do that. And we... So we look at these numbers here that we've been using these lexical numbers, right? That is Strong's numbers to provide symbols. But none of these numbers have, they, they all are in agreement with what we already understand about the verses, right? That is, we haven't reinterpreted these prophecies and we're just accepting what these are saying, right? I mean, that's the idea. We're accepting we're accepting what we already understand regarding the the historical interpretation of the book of Daniel and of Daniel chapter 11. And we recognize that there is a parallel which had been recognized long before in this movement. The idea that what happened prior to November 9th, 2000, or, or 1989, is Rome exalting itself to establish the vision. How long has that been understood in this movement? That Rome exalting itself is prior to November 9th, 1989. Isn't that something that we've come to a fairly common understanding with? Yeah, and how long has that been in the movement? Ever since, since I've been in it, anyway. Yeah, and ever since I've been in it, and I'm pretty sure from what we researched in the past, it was a feature of the movement prior to 2001, right? Now, it's obviously been elaborated on a bit more, but the whole idea of what Reagan and the Pope did prior to 1989, is that Rome was exalting itself to establish the vision. So when we make an application using the symbolic use of numbers, such as the lexical sum for this verse, verse 16, and we've already you know, looked at verse 14 and all the symbols there, we would have to say that, that this is a valid application of these numbers. That, the, that is, the numbers tell us what we already know. But it is connecting it to the symbol of July 18, 1870, which is a double symbol of July 18. OK, so and, and it's, you know, it's 150 years to July 18, 2020. You know, so if we wanted to look at how many years that is. <clears throat> OK, so I, I think we, we have to accept the symbolic use of numbers here. That, that this that this is just another witness. And, and it's given to us at this time because of the situation that exists within the world and within the church. So I think, you know, we've gone through these verses enough to, to say that this, this is a valid interpretation. Now, uh, one of the things I want to address is this siege. So we were talking about this siege, 63 BC, right? We have this siege and that's a parallel to the, to the other sieges. So you have a, a siege in 587. Uh, that's going to be, um, you know, the siege that leads to the destruction of Solomon's temple. You're going to have this siege in 63 BC. That's where a pagan Rome is <coughs> going to conquer Judeo Palestine, right? It's going to conquer Jerusalem. But specifically, it's the siege of Jerusalem. And then you have, uh, you know, obviously the siege in 70 AD. You have the siege in in 66, and and we have the siege as symbols in our line. Right. So I believe uh, December 25th, 2020 is uh, a siege. Um, now, one thing about um, December 25th, 2020, what happened on December 25th, 2020? The bomb exploded in downtown Nashville. Oh, OK. What else happened? It was the end of 187 days. OK. Uh, but what event happened? Anybody else know? The information I have, I'm trying to find it. Uh, do you have a copy of it? 
Okay, so we have this, the School of the Prophets was sold on January 21st, right, uh, 2021. And according to the information that I had, it was put up for sale on December 25th, uh, 2020, which seems like an odd day to put something up for sale. Well, I think we have different dates for it being listed for sale. And yeah, it's so there probably, are, yeah, so, yeah. I'm just saying it might depend on like what information source it is. Yeah. And and when they consider it being listed, because it seems odd, it would be listed. But that's one of the dates that I have on when I look up the property, it'll say it's listed on December 25th and, you know, sold for 650,000 on January 21st. Yeah. And it's going to be 18.7% below market value that they or before below what they ask below the asking price i just can't find it right now it was easily found it on my other computer when i searched i don't know why anyway so i was just bringing this up because we have these all of these symbols right we have uh you know the 10th day of the 10th month has these different symbols and when it comes to the sale of the school of the prophets i mean it's you could say when they list it, that's the siege, and when it's sold, that's when the siege ends. I don't know. Um, but, you know, we can see that there are symbols connected with the sale of the School of the Prophets. And these symbols of the siege are connected with it. So when we look at the siege and we look at it in our history, we, we have a number of places. I mean, for instance, we have you know, October 10th is also a symbol of the siege because it's the 10th day of the 10th month. So when we look at this siege in 63 BC, I mean, we talked about where would we place this in our lines? Now, obviously we're not going to place it where, you know, like the sale of the school of the prophets, because this is dealing with, if we look at this verse, it's going to, uh, or these verses are going to give us the time before November 9th, 1989. They're going to give us November 9th, 1989 why it fell, falls, the Battle of Paneum is lost. And then we're going to see that the papacy is going to come against the USA. So it goes against the King of the South. You know, there are symbols, Iran points out, there are symbols every time that FFA moves against the use of symbols or numbers of symbols, right? So if we're using numbers as symbols, remember we have December 6, 2020, FFA moved against the symbolic use of numbers on a date that represents the 126 and the 2520. So it wasn't very wise. And Jeff does it again, 1260 days from July 18th. Anyway, right now we're looking at this siege. So we have this siege. Uh, we have the New World Order under George Bush, right? That's going to be in that history of those 777 days from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 2021. So we have the new world order under George Bush the first, which I think makes the most sense. And then uh, the parallel to pagan Rome under Pom- Pompey the Great. That would be in our line. We would apply that to the papacy. Standing in the glorious land here, that would, of course, be 9-11, because that's going to be a parallel to the Sunday law. And then we have, uh, which by his hand, That's the message. That's a symbol of the message to the Levites, March 27th. Shall his, shall, uh, which by his hand shall be consumed. So the consume there is that number that symbolizes the siege. Well, it's not the number that, but it symbolizes the siege. That's going to be the siege, we say in 63 BC. So we have this number attached to it, uh, 3615. The question is, what does that number represent? Can we use this number to represent the siege? Now, one is the number is divisible by 723. So it has those three digits. Uh, and that is it's um, 15 by you know, 5 times 273 is 3,615. Um, we also have that the number itself, 3615 divided by 365.25 ends up being nine years and 327 days, 327 and three quarter days. So almost 328, but 327 days. 
<clears throat> so nine years and 327 days. Now, I couldn't really find a place to put that in the lines, you know, some specific span of dates. And so we were looking at dates addressing, um, well, we had the Soviet-Afghan war, and then we had the meetings between the presidents of the United States and Pope John Paul II. We also looked at the date when they uh, first get, uh, they, they establish official diplomatic relations with the papacy. Now, the one thing I haven't looked at is these New World Order speeches. And there are some other uh, events. So we're going to have, um, so we have one in 1990. Um, so I'll, I'll just show you what I'm going to do here. So, so we haven't done this yet. Like we haven't tried looking at these in relationship to this span of time, this siege. So we're going to say that that represents a period of nine years and 327 days or 28 days that should, you know, because we have it happen with other things, connect significant dates together in that period of time. So let's do it this way. So has anybody got the date for the dates for, for George Bush's uh, seniors, his, his speeches? I do know we have a New World Order speech. Where is this? Uh, September 11th, 1990, right? Now, if somebody can kind of grab those, that information for us. So if we put in, oh, not November, September 11th, 1990, and, and, and we could do this one way. We could say, well, you know, this is the siege and you know, you count this many days, it's going to bring us to 2000, August 4th. So obviously, you know, it's not going to bring us to September 11th, uh, 2000 at all, right? Because it's less than 10 years. And we could go backwards. It's going to give us October 18th, 1980. Anybody have those dates? Well, I'm looking at his Dallas Morning News copy of his speech from September 11th, 1990. Yeah. yeah. So we know that one, but that he has more speeches. Right. He had one before the UN as well. Yeah, and I have them somewhere on my somewhere here. Let me see here. Because um, I typed in New World Order here. So I know we got yeah, so September 11th, 1991. And you're going to have that Time Magazine, The Holy Alliance, that's going to be February 24th, 1992. So September 23rd, 1991, President Bush gives a speech at the 46th session of the United Nations. Uh, this is conflated with the joint session New World Order speech given on September 9th, uh, 1990. So there is one on September 23rd, 1991. So that's the one I want to look at. So September 23rd, that brings us back to October 30th, 1981. If we go backwards from that date, and obviously it's going to bring us to August 16th, 2001. So it doesn't bring us to September 11th. Apparently he used this also in his 1991 State of the Union address. Yeah, when? what date is that? I'm looking for it. Okay. Yeah, I, I know I had a list of it somewhere. But I don't know where that list is. So it looks like here I've only listed these two in, in my charts. January 29th of 91. Okay. I probably have a file of it somewhere. Yeah. So that brings us back to March 7th, 1981, which I don't have anything for that date as an event. It's a symbol of the Sunday law. So I don't really have anything uh, for it at this point, right? But... I wish I could find that. Uh, let me see. It might be, I might have it in the document. Okay, I have a document of it. Let's go there. So there's a, the address before the joint session of Congress on, on September 11th, 1990. The fundraiser for gubernatorial candidate Peace, Pete Wilson in San Francisco on the 19th of September, 1990. An announcement on January 16th, 1991 of Allied military action in the Pers Persian Gulf, uh, the January 29th State of the Union one that you just mentioned. There's one at Maxwell Air Force Base War College in Montgomery, Alabama, on the 13th of April, April 1991. 
So I had a chart here of all these different. Um, so you got the December 25th, 1991. I don't know why, what that one is. Let me see. For some reason, I don't know why I have that date there. Oh, this is the end of the Soviet Union. And then I have the um, September 11th, 2001. Yeah. So I got these. So these are the speeches within that period from 1989 uh, to 1991. So each one of those dates could be uh, in some ways connected with that, that, that um, number, the 36501, connecting us to some event. So that last speech is April 13th. Yeah, so I don't have anything for it yet. So I'm going to have to spend a bit more time on that. But people can try it out. They can try to see if there's some date that connects. Now, if we're going to take this siege and we're going to place it. So when it says, and by his hand shall be consumed, right? So this is this phrase. And then it's going to talk about this siege in 63 B.C. So, so we're going from basically 191 BC to 63 BC in this verse. I mean, we could even say, well, we're going to the Battle of Panean as well, but it's going to bring us from this history, you know, from 191 BC to 63 BC. It's a period of 128 years. And what would we liken this siege in 63 BC to? And, and so we have, uh, December 25th, 1991, we have uh, the New World Order speech under George Bush. And, and I think that, um, you know, I would put myself personally the 9-11-90 speech as that speech, right? That That's where, you know, I would place it. I mean, we could put the September 23rd, 1991 speech as well but i i think that this is where i would place it and and that's what i would have that's the one that i would have heard heard so back in 1990 in september of 1990 i was um i was working in the garden listening to the radio harvesting the garden and i heard this speech right so i noticed right away this new world order so it it so, so I'm part of that history. I remember this occurring. Um, and so that's the one that I mark. And I, and I think that's the one that most people would have, would have marked. Also, it has the September 11th date. So then, um, pagan Rome under Pompey, Pompey the Great, right? That's the papacy shall stand in the glorious land. So you can see the progression of this, right? We should be able to see all this as a progression. You know, the king of the south, is conquered, right? November 9th, 1989. You have the end of the Soviet Union, December 25th, 1991. You have the New World Order speech. Now, you know, it's in that period of time, right? So it's, so he has this speech, but the New World Order is being developed in that period, right? In that 777 inclusive days. And, and then it says, um, that they're going to stand in the glorious land, and we would put that at 9-11. So then we have, which by his hand, the symbol of the message to the Levites, shall be consumed. So how do we place this in our history? I mean, do we just say, well, the United States is under siege since 9-11, or do we place it as at some other point? Because this consumed, uh, this would refer to... Um, because the word itself, we looked at it. I just can't remember the exact definition. Yeah, so it it means to end, to cease, to finish, to perish, uh, to complete, prepare, consume, accomplish, cease, uh, finish, fulfill. It's lots of different meanings. But the idea is kalah means to end, right? So accomplishing something, finishing something. To be at an end, so so something is ending, right? It, you know, we we could say, well, this is persecution, but uh, there's an end, and and where is that end? That we could say, which by his hand shall be accomplished. I mean, that could, could just. How are we going to do this? I don't. I really want to do this for everyone. 
So we're placing this by his hand as an equivalent to the message to the Levites. Well, it's a symbol of the message to the Levites. Right. So, so it has something to do with 9-11, right? So which by his hand shall be accomplished or consumed. Now, what we have always taken this to be is when it says by his hand shall be consumed, is referring to the papacy consuming the glorious land, right? That's how we've understood Isn't that how we've understood this? And we look at the parallel in what happens because the hand in Daniel 11.42, for instance, he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries. Now, his hand there is 3027 and countries is 776. Now, we know from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991, is a cardinal count of 776 days. It's an inclusive count of 770, uh, 777, but it's a cardinal count of 776. And so we're also attaching then this period from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 1991 as connected to this whole, this whole thing, right? So it's all, all connected. So we have the symbol for the Levites there, even in verse 42, right? Because we have his hand, right? And then it says also, uh, because he's going to stretch forth his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps, the tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make away many. And he shall plant his tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. So we, his, so his stretching forth of the hands out of, upon the countries that we got, we got those symbols there. So, how, how are we going to address this when we're we're looking at this verse? Because because that's going to obviously be dealing with pap- papal Rome, which we're going to look at, and that's the main way, way that we've understood Daniel eleven, verse forty. You know, that's going to deal with papal Rome, and we've we've already created parallels with our line, but we're just going back with pagan Rome now and creating this parallel. So we're saying that this siege is, which by his hand shall be consumed. It's connected to this. Symbol of the message to the Levites, 3027. And, and we have this other symbol, 3615, which is to, to make an end. We're saying, well, that's connected with this, the siege in 63 BC. And so, so we have the siege symbol. And where would we place that in our lives? Okay. So to me, it's, it's a pretty simple question to ask. Does it mean that we have a good answer for it? at this point does it help us that the first time this phrase shall be consumed would look to occur in numbers 1435 okay so let's go there so that's just the word to be consumed that's the phrase oh the phrase yeah well that's one word though right just you just looked up the one word no i'm i'm looking at a phrase Okay, okay, so it's not the same Hebrew word, shall be consumed, okay. Okay, so this is going to deal with um, the 40 years in the wilderness. Right, and then in number 1713, we have a further statement on this. Okay, we be consumed, yeah, so we have consumed, yeah, okay. Does this help us at all? I don't see it helping us yet. Right. Because, I mean, this word consumed, uh, it means to complete, accomplish, cease. So it has a similar meaning to the other word, three, six, one, five. But they are different words. Um, I just want to look at yes, I don't I don't know. Now, is it is it the same different word that we find in Ezekiel five, twelve? That's the three, six, one, five word. Right. Okay. And, and this one is addressing the siege. Right. Which is, right. 
because a third part shall die with the pestilence, with the famine, and they shall be consumed in the midst of the, the third part shall fall by the sword. So that does help connect this to the siege, because it's talking about what's going to happen during the siege of Jerusalem, right? Yeah, so, I mean, this word occurs a lot. It's kind of weird here, because it says, we got the word here, three, six, consumed. Okay, I see. So it's translated as end in Ezekiel eleven thirteen. Ezekiel 20, 17, Ezekiel 42, 5, um, Ezekiel 43, 23. It's translated as consumed in Ezekiel 12, 5, 12, Ezekiel 13, 14, Ezekiel 22, 31. Obviously, it's in Daniel 11, 16. Um, finished Daniel 12, verse 7, where it says, uh, I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, which held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished or consumed, right? It's in Daniel eleven thirty six. The king shall do according to his will. He shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous words against the god of gods and shall prop, prosper until the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. So the indignation that's going to be accomplished is the 1260. This is about the 1260 years of papal supremacy in Daniel 1136. Okay. Right. This is also the parallel verse to Daniel chapter 11, verse 14. Or is it 16? One where we have him doing according to his will. Maybe that's 16. Yeah. So 16. So 16 and 36 both contain that idea and they both contain the word consumed. So until the indignation be accomplished. So what would we gather from that, that we can connect it? Uh, that word consumed with accomplished and in verse Daniel 11, verse 36. We're looking that the indignation shall be accomplished. We're using accomplished as another parallel to that out of consume. It's the so, same word. Right. Yeah. But I'm, I'm saying in the English, is this also not the same as ending this indignation? Yes. That's that's what I'm saying the word consumed means. So so the so they translated it as as consumed in verse 16. But the idea is there this isn't persecution. This is an end of a period of time and it's going to be uh which by his hand shall be ended. So there's an action that the papacy does that terminates, right? Okay. A period of time. And, and the question is, can we connect these words, the symbols of these words, to that period of time that would help establish this? That That's the idea. So we have, you know, the 3615, nine years and 327 days. So the question is, is that a period of time that we look at, or we just look at the symbol with the 327 days, but then what about the nine years? So we're saying that this is, which by his hand shall be accomplished. He shall stand in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be accomplished. The idea there, you could say consumed, it could be ended. Either the glorious land is ending. But we also see that we have this number 776, which represents this period from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 20, or 1991, right? Now, even this word glorious, right? So we have this glorious land. What happened there? What didn't mean to happen? I was just clicking on the word glorious. Um, okay, so we got this word glorious, Tisby. <clears throat> CB, however you say that. And I mean, it shows up in lots of places. Daniel 11, verse 41, Daniel 11, verse 45, means glorious or beautiful, goodly, okay? Now, if we took it as a period of time, it's 18.187 years, which is 18 years and 
18 years and 68 days. <clears throat> so this word glorious. So let's just take a look at this. Now, this is the this Hebrew number 6643. It comes from 6638. Um, that is to amass, that is to grow turgid, specifically to array an army against. So it's it's Taba. That's where it, CB is glorious. Now, it's kind of a strange uh, word because we, we think, well, glorious. But but what would this this be? Uh, to grow turgid. That's the meaning of the word. Isn't turgid filled with blood? Right. Swollen or distended or congested. Right. Sure. Right. That's how we think. So to grow turgid. Okay. We generally don't think of that as something good. But this same, this same word as the glorious land, the first use of it is in Deuteronomy 1215. And it refers to a roebuck. Yeah, so 1215, it's going to be, yeah, as uh, the roebuck and as the heart. So the question is, why is it translated? So the word can be beauty, glory, honor. It also can refer to a gazelle or a roebuck. So we don't really know. Um, but that, but that's what the word can mean. Now, the, the first thing I notice about the word is that is the number 6643. That's actually 10 days more than the period between November 9th, 1989, and uh, September 11th, 2001, right? Because they're 6,633 days apart. Uh, let me think. No, I got that wrong. Um, from September 11th, 2001 uh, to November 19th. So to November 9th. So that would go to November 19th. I'm just trying to remember. Yeah, so it's from September 11th. Here, I'm going to look it up. So if I go to 2001, September 11th, my count, 6633 days, it brings me to November 9th, 2019. So 6643 would bring me 10 days past that. So I notice the number's close, but it's, you know, it's 10 off, right? So that's the first thing I notice about the, the word. Um, because <clears throat> I know that span of time, the 6633. So we got 6643, okay? So so as a symbol, you know, I kind of understand it. Okay, now, I mean, the, all the places that it shows up, I mean, we know that it's in Daniel 8, verse 9, as pleasant, right, toward the pleasant land. We also know it's... Um, 41 and 45. Where? Daniel 41, 11, 41, and Daniel yeah, okay. 45. Yeah, because that's going to be the glorious land. And Daniel right. 11. Yeah. And um uh, just seeing other ones that we hadn't looked at. How about uh, in Ezekiel? Well, Ezekiel 20. How about Ezekiel 7, 20? Yeah, that's just as for beauty of his ornament, he said in its majesty that they made the images of their abominations and their detestable things therein. Um, yeah, so I don't see a significant, I don't see anything there attached to it. And you've got Ezekiel 20 verses 6 and 15. Yeah, so in 6, you're going to have him lifting up his hand unto them to bring forth the land of Egypt, a land that had, I had espied for them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. So talking about the land, the promised land, right? So it's the glorious land. And then 2015 is roughly going to be the same. I don't see it in my references here. It's kind of odd. Because I got five and six. Yeah, it's just the same verse, basically. Right. So it's a repeat. Yeah. So what symbolism do we take from that? I mean, we've got nine verses in between this. Is there a chiastic structure here? I, I don't know what you mean, chiastic. Don't they have? Okay, if we if we have a verse in this pattern that brings something the first time and then it returns to it, is there something in the intervening verses that has something to do with the subject that we're studying? Oh, oh you're just saying if we look at the verse in between these two verses. Correct. Okay. 
Aran, can you figure that out? Now, again, of course, we have glory and land connected, you know, the 776. So anyway, this idea of the meaning of the word glory being based upon this other word, which has to do with to grow turgid. Now, the idea there with uh, turgidity is that, you know, it's it's like swollen or, you know, and so the question is, why is that beauty or glory or honor? So just probably a, a visual representation. I mean, it could be that the words are, you know, these two words are just happen to be spelt the same and don't have any connected meaning. But it's most likely that there's something from this idea of something growing and swelling, which would relate to the glorious land, you know, in a positive sense instead of a negative sense. So we have this glorious land. And, and, and my point is that we have this symbol that goes from, if it was 6633, we would have had from September 11th, 2001 to November 9th, 2000, November 9th, 2019. And then you would have 777 days to December 25th, 2021, right? Cause that period of time from September 11th in uh, 2001 to December 25th, 2021 is 7,410 days. Yeah, these two together, you get 4,719 days, 7,419 instead of 7,410. So it's just kind of interesting whether whether it's significant or not i don't know but it, it's close numbers and and so there must be something there about this that you have these two numbers the glorious land gives us basically as as symbols the hebrew numbers nine days past december 25th 2021 which would be january 3rd 2022 or something but we're just trying to understand what this what this period of time is that's being referred to, um, which by his hand shall be ended. Repeat, please. So we, by his hand shall be consumed or be accomplished, right? Be right. ended. So I'm just saying, do those Hebrew numbers have any connection to the glorious land? Is there some connection we can make between these? Well, the hand shall be consumed. I mean, if we're looking at that, we're, we're coming out to 6642. When we add these two together and we have 6643 in the glorious land, right? Yeah. So they're one number apart. Yeah. So you understand people what he's saying. He's saying if you add um, hand and consumed, you get 6642. But if you have glorious land added together, and you take away from it hand and consumed, you come out with 777. Right, yeah. And that's because, you know, so so somehow we're connecting um, the period from November 9th, 1989 to December 25th, 2021. That's the 776. And we're connecting September 11th, to to November 19th or 18th, depending which one we use, because 6633 days goes from September 11th to November 9th, 19, or 2019, right? So, so that gives us something close to that, but not exactly the same. And so, yeah, so if you add um, to... 6642, you add 777, you'll get um, 7,419. And if you add uh, 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 glorious to land, you'll get 7,419, right? So so there's something there that to me, it just seems rather coincidental, like more than a coincidence, right? <clears throat> So I don't know, I don't know the answer, but it, it's, it's a difference of one, which is a difference of one between 776 and 777. Right? That's right. kind of what I'm saying. Now, 
Now, is there any significance if we were to count from September 11th and we go to November uh, 18th or, or 19th in 2019? So what's happening in that history in, in 2019, November? We have November 9th, right? And then we're going to have ten, nine or 10 days later. So either the 18th or the 19th of November in 2019. So that's going to be, uh, you know, November 9th, of course, is the Sabbath and the 18th is the Monday and the 19th is the, the Tuesday. So is there something that happens in the movement in that history that would be needs to be recognized by us? That has to do with a period of time. Or is there something that happens in as an external event in that history? Because the papacy here, I mean, it could be referring to what's what's happening with Parminder's group. Correct. You know, you know so that, that's a possibility there. So I don't know. Right. I don't know what, what happens in that history, particularly. That could be yes, Because that time uh, was uh, the time that uh, they were proclaiming their message of uh, women to put on uh, trousers. And they said uh, that was uh, the close of probation. Right. So November 9th is going to be the close of probation. But this brings us like nine or ten days past that. Right. So if we take the 6643 and we count from September 11th, 2001, it's going to bring us to November 19th. If we add up hand and consumed, that's going to be 6642. And that will bring us to November 18th in 2019. So for those two, the fact that they're just one number apart and that they're so close to November 9th, 2019 from the symbol uh, that we have there already uh, of 9-11, you know, it's sort of say, well, is there something there? Because here we have 9-11, right? And then we're going to have this number, H327 and 6615, and you add them together, and it's going to bring you nine days past November 9th, 2019. So I'm just going to say, that this brings us to 9, 11, oops, yeah, not where I put 19, 11. Um, well, I could put that 9, 11, 19. Again, I put 19. <laughs> okay, it brings us to 9, 11, 19. Let's just put that there. Okay, so it doesn't bring us to 9, 11, 19. It brings us to 19, 11, 19, or 18, depending on, on what we take as the count. So that would refer to something within our movement. Now I have here glorious. I didn't put the word land in here. So I need to put in glorious land as H776. So we got that in there as well. So glorious land is 6643 and 776. That's land. Okay. So we have represented there 10 more days than between September 11th and November 9th. And one less day than between November 9th and December 25th, uh, right? So instead of 777, it's 776. Instead of 6633, it's 6643. Now, if it would have been 6633 and 777, you know, for the word land, that would be pretty amazing, right? Because that would be exactly adding together from September 11th to November 9th, 2000. 19 and then the seven, seven days to December 25th, 2021. Right. But it's not. So it's got these it's 10 off and one off, but it's, it's very interesting that it's that close. So what, what I'm saying is that this symbol here of 19, 11, 19, I mean, one is it's a mirror or part of me that I'm doing this wrong here because it should be 19. September, right? There's what we need to do. So September 11th. So it's going to be 19. No, November. What am I doing? Never mind. Yeah, that's November 19. Okay. Getting confused with September 11th. So 
so normally we would put this, I guess what I should do is this would be 11. If we're going to keep our dates consistent in how we shape them, 11, 19, 19. I know we're going slowly through this. And we only got like five minutes left. Well, what about Daniel eleven sixteen? And I mean, we know that if we flip things over, I mean, this can represent eleven nineteen as well, right? I would agree. So, so that's something to think about in that in this context that um, we may not know yet what that means, but but we have that symbol. So, so I do think that the siege. Um, might be connected with that period of time. Um, now we know that um, the the tenth day of the tenth month we had already marked January six, twenty twenty, with one of our spans of time. Now January twenty six, twenty twenty is one year before January six, twenty twenty one, when the siege occurs, right? And you're going to have also, if you go uh, to December twenty uh, fifth. In 2020, it's also going to be the 10th day of the 10th month, right? So it's kind of weird, but in the year 2020, we have January 6th as the 10th day of the 10th month on the biblical calendar. And that's December 25th. That's the bombing of Nashville. And if we go one year earlier, that's January 6th, 2020, right? And we had that as a count of a number of days. Does anybody remember what that was? We had a number of days that was given by uh, these symbols. That is, if we took shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, we added those words together. And we counted from June 7th, 1982. That's the first meeting of Reagan with the Pope at the Vatican. It's the number of days, 13,727 days to January 6th, 2020 which is the 10th day of the 10th month. So one, one year in advance of the siege, December 25th, 2020, on the biblical calendar, 10th day of the 10th month, and January 6th, 2021, on, on our calendar, right? So it has this, this strange coincidence. So I think there is something more there that, that we, we have to look at. So at least I, I, we can agree on that point, that there's... Some things here that we we need to understand why this symbol is showing up. Now, of course, this also relates to the uh, 191 BC. So we have a lot of ones and nines showing up because we got this December 25th, uh, 1991. We connect that to 191 BC. Right, he does according to his own will. None shall stand before him. Okay, so. Any final thoughts? I know it's a lot to think about. I always feel sorry for people watching these videos. Um, you know, at some point we start to bring some of these things together, but it's not, you know, as straightforward at first when we start working through it. Then we start to see how it fits. Okay. Any, and no thoughts? Okay. Let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness and love. And, um, and thank you for the time that we have to open your word together. We pray for each person studying. We pray for this movement and this difficult time in the movement where people have to make a choice. And we just ask, Lord, that we can continue to follow and serve you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.